thanks for being a part of this confirmation experience. My hope and prayer is that each one of these teachings is teaching you to fall more in love with Jesus Christ. It certainly is doing that for me. And today we're talking about worship. Now, worship is something that when we say the word, we probably think of a setting like a Sunday morning where we've got tons of people around us and we're all worshiping to the same Elevation song or Hillsong song or Bethel song or whatever the song is. And that's one form of worship. But today, I believe we're going to talk about from the Bible some different forms of worship that maybe we don't think about all the time. But nonetheless, we're going to see that worship can be done at any time, in any place, in any space to the same God who's deserving. Romans 12 is where I want us to start. Because what Romans 12 shows us in one verse, it's the very first verse of Romans 12, actually, it shows us that we were indeed created to worship our living God. Let's read it. Here's what Paul says. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and a holy sacrifice, the kind that he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. The Bible paints this clear picture that not only were we created to worship, but we were created to be in a relationship with God himself. Those two things go hand in hand. That when we know God, when we follow Jesus Christ with everything we've got, with all of our lives, that's when we are able to truly worship Jesus Christ with everything we've got. And if you've had the chance to do that, you'll probably relate with this next statement, that in my opinion, there is nothing quite like worshiping our God. There's nothing quite like it. Oftentimes, I can't even put words to it to explain to people what it's like because we were designed intricately to worship. And since we were all created to worship God, a big piece of that is doing it together. You see, there are Sunday morning experiences that we have where we worship God with tons of other people. Maybe for us that happens on a Wednesday night as well. And we're worshiping God maybe in a different form, in a small group setting, in a Bible study setting of some kind. I believe that just like our community piece that we'll talk about in this confirmation experience, we were not meant to do life alone. And because we weren't meant to do life alone, and because we're, we, we were created to worship God, oftentimes we find ourselves doing that in community. We find ourselves doing that together because that's where growth, that's where transformation can take place. We were created to worship. We were created to worship oftentimes together. But the truth is, worship can look a lot of different ways. Many people think that worship is only through song only on a Sunday morning at church, only singing a song together in a community. I believe worship looks a lot of different ways. There's actually these two sacraments that we talk about a lot in the church that are forms of worship. And the first one is baptism. Now, baptism is something that you've probably heard about before uh, many, many times from youth leaders or maybe even family members. It's a concept in the New Testament. And baptism, very simply put, is an outward sign of an inward decision. It's us publicly declaring that we follow Jesus with our entire life. You see, in the New Testament, there seemed to be this series of events that took place in the book of Acts where people would get baptized after they finally realized that Jesus Christ was who Jesus Christ said he was. And they wanted to follow Jesus with everything that they had. And so many individuals, many families will get baptized because of a decision made to follow Jesus Christ. It was an outward sign telling those around them about their inward decision. But there's a second sacrament. And the second sacrament is often called communion. And communion sounds kind of like the word community, which it's supposed to. Kind of the same concept, that we are coming together and we're taking communion, the Lord's Supper, as it's often referred to, together. You see, this originates in the final meal that Jesus has here on earth. And he's sitting around a table just like this one with his disciples. And he's looking around the table. He's saying some incredible things and they're just spending time together. But there comes a point in the meal where Jesus decides to pull out a piece of bread. And he says, this bread 
is my body. Because in just a few short days, my body is going to be broken for you. And so what I want you to do is I want you in the future to take bread just like this and take communion just like this with one another in community to remember the sacrifice I made. He says, this is my body broken for you. Then he takes a cup of wine and he said, this, this, this is my blood shed for you. Do all of this in remembrance of me. You see, Jesus didn't give us just a model to follow when it comes to how we speak and how we live day to day, how we treat other people. But he was even good enough to give us a model of how to remember him when we're together, when we're in a church service, when we're worshiping him in many, many other ways. He gives us communion. He gives us this amazing way to experience the magnitude of his sacrifice, his crucifixion, his death on a cross, ultimately to save myself and save you from our sins that we've committed, the ways that we've fallen short of God's glory. There are many different forms of worship. Worship can be done in any place, at any time, with any people in many different forms. So I want to challenge you today. Find a space, find a time, carve out a time in your schedule to just worship. Maybe for you that looks like you're driving down the road and you are blaring the music that other cars are getting freaked out as to what's coming out of your car, but it's your favorite worship song. Maybe that's what's going to happen for you today. Maybe for you this is being watched close to a Wednesday night and you've got service tonight. I want to challenge you to worship wholeheartedly the God that you serve, the God that loves you despite the sins in your life. Regardless of what worship looks like for you, whether it's at a communion table, whether it's declaring outwardly an inward decision through baptism, whether it's standing in a church and worshiping wholeheartedly, whether it's behind closed doors with earphones in, just listening to your favorite worship song, whether it's reading God's word, just you and him, they're all forms of worship. The key is not which of those forms we choose. The important thing is that we choose to worship. 